اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلاۃ والسلام علی محمد و علیہ الطیبین الطاہرین رب اشرح لي صدری و یسر لي امری و اخلل عقدۃ من لسانی یفقهوا قولی ربی زدنی علم سو السلام علیکم ایوری ون ٹوڈے وی ول بی ریفلیکٹنگ ان شاء اللہ آن ورس فرام سورہ مائدہ وچ از چیپٹر 5 اینڈ اٹ از ورس 55 And uh, in this verse, the Quran, while talking about whom to take as a wali, and we'll talk about what a wali is, says, your wali is only Allah, his apostle, and the faithful of those who keep up prayer and give alms while they bow, or while they're in a state of ruku. So, uh, you know, uh, as we just commemorated the occasion of the martyrdom of Imam Ali alayhi salam, let us reflect on this verse to remind us of his position as various scholars from all schools of thought concur that this verse was revealed to in response to an act of Imam Ali alayhi salam. So before we begin reflecting on the verse, let us examine a key word in this verse, which is wali. The word wali in Arabic has various meanings in English. A friend, a protector, a guardian, a leader, one whom a follower inclines to, and this is just to name a few. Although uh, wali can mean friend, in this context of this verse, many scholars agree that it means something more than just an ordinary friend. Scholars explain that it is not possible that Allah would tell us to befriend only those who have these very specific qualities. Therefore, they explain the wali here means a leader, both in a physical and a spiritual sense, for the guidance of believers. It must also be noticed that no prophetic traditions are reported for this verse, which would support the use of wali for friend in this particular verse. So the verse begins by talking about how the believer should only take three entities and as one's primary leaders, protectors, or guardians. Number one, God, Allah, one's primary protector or wali is always Allah, one of whose names is Al-Wali. And of course, following him, his Prophet وسلم, and then three other believers as awliya, uh, plural of wali, who are distinguished by two primary and very specific qualities. You know, it's uh, the verse is very clear that these are the two specific qualities and it says, It's only with these specific qualities that you should accept someone as a wali. Firstly, they establish salah. And at various times, we've talked about how establishing salah is different from simply praying. And secondly, they give charity while they bow. That is in a state of salat while in the state of ruku. The verse refers to an incident in the life of the Holy Prophet وسلم, which is widely reported by all major schools of Islamic thought. So a companion named Jundob reports that once I performed the noon prayers in a mosque behind the Prophet وسلم, then a beggar came in, but no one attended to him. The beggar extended his hands towards the heaven and said, O oh God, bear witness, here in the mosque of the Prophet وسلم, I asked to be given something, but no one attended to me. At this time, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's son, uh, cousin and son-in-law, Ali, Ali uh, Ibn Abi Talib, who was in the state of Ruku, saying his prayer, gestured with his hand, inviting the beggar to take the ring which was on his finger. The beggar, stepped, the beggar saw this, he stepped closer and removed the ring from Ali's finger. And this incident took place in the presence of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as reported by his companion, Jandu. So while reflecting on the occasion of revelation of this verse, it is interesting to note that no one heard the man when he called out to the people. But when he started complaining to and asked God directly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his call through this action of Imam Ali alayhi salam, subhanallah. So in the first instance, let us use this word to remind ourselves to follow worthy leaders, especially those who have been chosen and ratified by God himself. Secondly, we can also use this word to encourage the practice of giving charity whenever it is required. And scholars use it to remind believers to emulate Ali's example by giving charity as soon as one recognizes that someone is in need. Of course, on a broader level, this verse also teaches us that worshipping him cannot be separated from serving humanity. 
our vertical relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be supported by a horizontal relationship with his creation. The path to God always lies in serving and being of service to his creation, to, to people, to entities, to the universe that he has created. In fact, we could argue that the message of Islam can be encapsulated very simply, believe and do good, worship him and serve his creation, connect to divinity and recognize the needs and attend, recognize and attend to the needs of humanity. And Imam Ali alayhi salam's charity during this act of ritual worship combined the essence of Islam in one beautiful unified action. How beautiful and cool is that? So inshallah, I will see you again tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.